so coming to this data so the name itself indicates that so name itself indicates that the data is of stationary part and consists of the uh, i mean uh, it is placed on the induction motor and the three phase supply is given to it so coming to the rotor part it is of a rotating so it is connected to the mechanical load to the shaft and the rotor of the three phase induction motor is further classified into spiral gauge rotor and the other is the slip ring rotor which is also called as the wound or phase wound rotor so depending upon the type of rotor construction used in the three phase induction motor it is further classified as spiral gauge induction motor and slip ring induction motor next the other parts of this uh, three phase induction motors are the shaft which is used for transmitting the torque to the load which is and it is made up of steel and the other part is the bearings which is used for the supporting the rotating shaft one of the problems with the electrical motor is the production of heat during its rotation so to overcome this problem we need a fan for cooling and later later on we'll see how it represents and the next one is for receiving the external electrical connection a terminal box is needed and the other is there is a small distance between the rotor and stator which usually varies from 0.5 mm to 4 mm and such distance is called as the air gap so here we can see the uh, induction motor physical representation so we can go through all the uh, markings i, I mean the, look at the first one that is a motor frame so which is uh, everything it is covered by entire part of the motor next is look at the second one the laminated stator core third that is a laminated rotor core and the end shield and the five we, there exists the fan which is used to exhaust all the heat produced the under running conditions and for that we need a fan cover so it points represents the six and the shaft look at the seven and the point eight so the three phase winding the nine so look at the nine that is a terminal box here the, there is a terminal box so there we can uh, collect the terminal parts i mean the winding parts there we can change the connections also whether we can from star or star or delta next motor terminals so 11 is the bearings which gives the support support to the rotor shaft so likewise so coming to the construction of stator the stator is built up of high grade alloy steel laminations to reduce the eddy current losses it has three main parts namely outer frame the stator core and the stator wind so with uh, in discussion with the outer frame it is the outer body of the motor the main function of this support a uh, function is to support the stator core and to protect the inner parts of the machine for small machines the outer frame is plastic but for a large machine it is fabricated so here you can see the front view of a outer frame of the induction motor so there is this stator and uh, here it represents the rotor uh, i mean core part so all these represents the sl slots and here there we can place the winding stator winding and here it is a terminal box coming to the stator core the stator core core is built of high grade silicon steel stampings so why we go for stampings means uh, we can uh, reduce the hysteresis losses as well i mean uh, core losses in that uh, especially the hysteresis losses this main function is to carry the alternating magnetic field which also produces the hysteresis and eddy current loss so of course for reducing that we are going for the stampings and the stampings are fixed to the stator frame all these collective stampings will, will form in stator core so here you can uh, see the uh, diagram so each stampings are insulated from the other with a thin varnish layer so it acts as a media i mean uh, the medium so which isolates the each winding to not avoid the short circuits and the other is the thickness of the stampination uh, stampings usually varies from 0.3 to 0.5 mm so in the slots are punched on the inner side of the stampings as shown here so these are the stampings and here represents the tooth and here is the slot 
the slot is meant for placing the stator winding next is, uh, let's discuss on the stator windings the core of the stator carries the three phase windings uh, which are usually supplied from a three phase supply system electrical supply system so the six terminals of the windings two of each phase are connected in the terminal box of the machine the stator of the motor is wound for a definite number of poles depending on the speed of the motor if the number of poles is greater the speed of the motor will be less and if the number of poles is less obviously the speed will be high so it indicates that we have if there is minimum poles obviously the speed will be higher so as so according to the relationship of ns that is the synchronous speed is proportional to 1 by p where p represents the poles and f represents the fundamental frequency so this is the synchronous speed which we can uh, observe in the stator winding when the three phase supply is given so these windings either it may be star and or in delta connection as per the requirement here you can observe this in the figure so the three phase supply and the three phase winding and the for the stator core so the as per the requirement of the speed so the uh, the windings may differ in the type of the connection so here it it represents the poles so whenever we give a three phase winding to the stator the stator core so according to the i mean uh, uh, based upon the speed we can uh, vary the we can uh, alter the uh, winding so that we can uh, create a poles so that is look at here so r winding so it may be a two poles minimum number of poles required is two from two onwards we can start two three four likewise so if the two number of poles exist for a fundamental frequency of 50 hertz so the, the speed will be 3000 rpm so according to that we can increase the number of poles uh, by changing the winding so coming to the construction of the rotor so the rotor is also built of thin laminations of the same material as we have used in the stator part so laminated cylindrical core is mounted directly on the shaft these laminations are slotted on the outer side to receive the conductors so basically there exist two types of rotors that is a squirrel gauge rotor and the other is a slip ring rotor so let's discuss on the squirrel gauge rotor the squirrel gauge rotor consists of a laminated cylindrical core and the circular slots are at the outer periphery which are semi closed each slot contains uninsulated bar conductor of aluminum or copper at the end of the rotor the conductors are short circuited by a heavy ring of copper or aluminum so let's look into the diagram of the squirrel gauge rotor so it appears like a cage of a squirrel and these are the end rings so with this end rings we are going to make the rotor circuit closed so as we are well known that uh, whenever ca carrying uh, sorry conductor is placed in a very magnetic field so ems is induced and only when this rotor circuit is closed the current is allowed to the conductor so here the rotor circuit is closed that is the short circuit with the help of these end rings so the rotor slots are usually not parallel to the shaft but are skewed so i think we have discussed in this class how what is meant by skewing so a small a, a curved shape like so here you can see the pictorial representation rotor bars are skewed here so to avoid the Uh, reluctance as well as maximum flux can be linked linked with the coil the skewing of the rotor has the following advantages so look into one by one so it reduces it reduces humming and provide smooth and noise free operation and also it results in a uniform torque curve for a different positions of the rotor the locking tendency of the rotor is reduced as the teeth of the rotor and the stator attract each other and lock it increases the rotor resistance due to the increased length of rotor bar conductors so let us see the advantages of this squirrel gauge rotor so it, it costs cheaper when compared with the other so when the construction is also a robust construction uh, it doesn't require any brushes uh, and it reduces this risk of sparking so when coming to the you know i mean explanation of the slipping induction rotor 
so we will be knowing what is why we go for brushes and what are the risk of parking in construction and all we can get an idea here but we we don't require any uh, copper uh, rings i mean uh, sorry i mean the brushes and the maintenance for it and there are no sparks because we need not to change the external resistance the rotor circuit resistance is fixed there so the maintenance is less the power factor is higher and obviously the efficiency of the stage rotor is high so coming to the advantages of the more phase one rotor so so sorry coming sorry not the advantages so let's discuss into the phase one rotor the phase one rotor is also called as a slip ring induction rotor it consists of a cylindrical core which is laminated and the outer periphery of the rotor has a semi closed slot which carries a three phase insulated winding the rotor windings are connected in star here so i think most of you have drawn this diagram also in the classroom so these are the slip rings for each phase we can observe the slip slip rings and uh, through these uh, slip rings and the brushes we are going to connect the external resistance that is the resistor bank to this rotor circuit so that we can control the resistance obviously the speed is also get varies so here this is these are the skewed rotor slots and the shaft so through these rings we can control the resistance which leads to uh, changing speed control of the rotor so that is the additional advantage of this slip in induction motor so let's see the few more points so the slip rings are mounted on the shaft with brushes resting on them and the brushes are connected to the variable resistor the function of slip rings and the brushes is to provide a means of connecting external resistance in the rotor circuit the resistor enables the variation of each rotor phase resistance to serve the following purposes let us see what are those it it increases the starting torque and decreases the starting current so as we have conducted in laboratory also so how we are going to vary the resistance so that we can limit the current and so the motor can be started from a low speed uh, so sudden inverse of current can also be avoided so it is used to control the speed of the motor so under running operations by adjusting this uh, by adding the resistance or removing the resistance we can control the speed of the motor so with the help of the resistor bank which is parallel connected next in, the, in this type also the rotor is skewed as we have seen in the uh, phase one rotor sorry in the squirrel gauge rotor a mild steel shaft is passed through the center of the rotor and is fixed to it the purpose of the shaft is to transfer the mechanical power so coming to the discussion of the advantages of phase one rotor so it has a high starting torque and a low starting current so mostly so the further for, for the for this reason majorly they prefer the slip ring induction motor and for the controlling the speed of the motor an external resistance can be added so that is an additional benefit so here we can see the uh, diagrams of the phase one rotor and spray gauge rotor so so this appears so this is somewhat uh, mirror to the practical view of the i mean the physical view of the rotors so hope you got an any uh, information regarding by seeing this diagram so what are the additional benefits of this phase one rotor and spiral gauge rotor so once again i'll stop sh sharing the screen and uh, look at what are the action coming to the slip ring rotor or phase one induction motor construction is complicated due to the presence of slip ring and brushes so whereas in spiral gauge the construction is very simple because uh, we no need to require we are not in need of any slip rings and any brushes so that is the uh, one comparison and other is the rotor winding is similar to the stator winding in case of the slip ring but coming to spiral gauge the rotor consists of rotor bars as we have seen in the diagram which are permanently shorted with the help of the end rings so we can easily add rotor resistance by using slip rings and brushes whereas in spiral gauge so rotor bars are permanently shorted and it's not possible to add external resistance so because the end rings are used for short circuit i mean the circuit is closed there so we cannot add an external resistance next so high starting torque is available in the slip ring induction rotor so because of this external resistance 
when compared with this squirrel gauge has less talking talk and further it cannot be improved also because it is fixed there next the slipping and like slipping uh, slipping and brushes are present here and there it's not present the frequent maintenance is required due to presence of brushes and here the less maintenance is required so the problem is that under running operation the brushes are uh, i mean under the brushes they may be uh, a spark sparks may appear in the brushes if uh, if it is continued so we have to just replace the brushes otherwise and there may be many ab abnormal conditions may appear appear in the rotor parts okay next construction is complicated and the presence of brushes i think we have discussed a lot right on uh, other is the motor is rarely used on 10% industries by using slipping induction motors and here the most commonly widely used that is the squirrel gauge rotors so uh, here in case of this uh, slipping rotor copper losses are high and hence it has a less efficiency whereas in uh, squirrel gauge rotor the less rotor copper losses and efficiency is high so speed control is possible with the help of the slip ring whereas in squirrel gauge it is not possible because of its fixed resistance so so finally the slip ring induction motor are used for very high starting torque which is required that is in hose crane elevators etc whereas in squirrel gauge induction motor it is used in lathes drilling machines fans blowers printing machines etc so 